All right, from the last video we saw that we have to do some vector subtraction in order to give us the vector that makes up this wall. And so in true form to everything else we've done, we need to write some unit tests and also implement vector subtraction. It's actually not that hard. Let's go to the engine tester project and set that as our startup project, if I can find it right there. And then we have vector 2D and vector 3D tests. And we're using vector 3Ds now. We could go back and do this for 2D, but I'm going to implement as needed, just in time coding. And so we'll, that's, that's how we'll roll. I'm going to collapse these tests. I could hit control MO, but my recording software likes to intercept the control M hotkey. Vector 3D subtraction. All right, and then vector 3D first, and we're not going to do anything too elaborate here. I'm pretty straightforward. I need some random numbers, so I'll just hit some random numbers on my keyboard. That'll be the first vector, vector 3D. Second, we'll do 7 and 1. How about that? My favorite numbers, actually, they're not. I just kind of came up with that. And then... Vector 3D result gets first minus the second. And then we should expect float equal, let's see, result dot x would be 8 minus 7. That should give us a 1. And then expect uh, float equal again, result dot y. Uh, 3 minus 1 should be a 2. And then let's 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 go the other way. Result gets second minus first, and then expect float equal. Uh, let's see, seven minus eight will just be a negative one. I guess it'll just be the inverse of these, the negative of these. So let's do whoops. Result dot x should be equal to a negative one, and then expect float equal result dot y will be a negative 2. Okay, and that should be good. Now this won't build because we have not uh, at least stubbed out the implementation of the subtraction operator. We need to overload that. So just like we did with the previous operators, let's go to math and vector 3D H. And then down here we have uh, our binaries. Remember we made our binary operators non-members simply so we could uh, it's for reflexitivity reasons. You can, like, and and another thing is the scalar. This obviously couldn't be a member operator. Anyway, I'm talking about things I've already talked about. Let's let's get down to business. Vector 3D, 3D operator minus. I guess I sh should have just copied this. I just copy that and put that there. But you've seen me copy and paste, and it's turned into bad news. So there we go. We just uh, stubbed out the declaration. Let me save that. I'm gonna copy that line, go over to the inline file, and then just to be consistent, I'm going to put it right here below the plus. No longer have to say inline because we declared it as inline. And then the rest of this should be good. Let's return vector 3D, not implemented because remember we want our unit tests to fail before we make them pass. So look at me trying to be as strict as possible. Oh! Look at that, they all failed. They failed. In fact, before I had them fail, we should have made sure that all of our tests still pass. So I'm actually going to comment out all that test code we just wrote. And just ensure that our tests still pass. I would hope they'd still pass. We haven't changed anything. But then again, I've been surprised sometimes. It looks like we're all green. So very good. These tests fail. Very cool. The implementation will be pretty straightforward. All we got to do is copy this code and paste it here. Oh, I'm so scared of copy and paste. And then alt drag down there, change those to minuses. Uh, you know what? We did X and Y, but we didn't do Z. Look at me. I'm pathetic. Let's do a Z value. Let's do 9 and a 5. So then we have to say expect float equal result dot Z and 9 minus 5 should be 4 and then here expect float equal result dot z and that should be a negative four and drum roll run it I should have verified these tests failed but 
I'm getting lazy. Oh, look at that, all the green. The green's feeling good. Okay, so there we go. We've just implemented vector subtraction, and we made it test, pass the unit test. I'm going to go check it in to SVN, and then uh, we, we need to move forward. We need some more tools in our pocket before we can see if our ship has crossed the boundary. So we'll continue that in the next video.